Hi, this lesson is about the Cartesian coordinate system, plotting points, the distance formula, and the midpoint formula. So first let's start with the Cartesian coordinate system, also called the rectangular coordinate system. So that is a system defined by two axes, which we usually call the x-axis and the y-axis axis. The x-axis is um, indicated by this horizontal line here, and the y-axis is the vertical line. Um, the point where they intersect is called the origin, that's um, here in blue. So, and the origin is defined by the point zero, zero. There are infinitely many points that make up the rectangular coordinate system, and those points are um, an x value and a y value, and each value indicates the direction and how far you go along the x and y axis, and where those two values meet would be indicated by a point on the graph. The system is divided up into four quadrants, which uh, I've shown here with Roman numerals. Uh, starting in the upper right-hand quadrant, that is your first quadrant. In quadrant one, both your x and your y values are positive. Then you go counterclockwise to quadrant two. In quadrant two, your x values are negative and your y values are positive. Um, continue moving around and you end up in quadrant three. There your x values are negative and your y values are negative, so same sign, both negative. And finally you end in quadrant four where your x values are positive and your y values are negative. All right, so let's talk about how to plot a point. So we, we will plot the following points. One, three, negative two, one, negative three, negative four, and two, negative five. So I've color coded them so it'd be easier to read this graph below. So one, three. That means that you move to the right along the x axis one unit. So here's the one right here. And then you go up three units along the y axis. And where that green point is, that's the point one, three. Now we'll try negative two, positive one. For negative two, positive one, that means you go left two units and up one unit. So here's the point, negative two, positive one. That's in quadrant two. Now let's move on to negative three, negative four. For negative three, negative four, that means you have gone three units left and four units down. That's indicated here by this blue point, negative three, negative four. And finally, um, our last one in this dark purple is two negative five. Uh, to get to that point, you move two units right, five units down. Here's our point two negative five in quadrant four. So that's an example of a point in each of the four quadrants. All right, so let's answer the following question regarding our quadrants. Determine the quadrant where the following points exist. So the first one is negative three, negative two. So negative three, negative two, that means you go left and down. So that's in quadrant three. Then let's look at one negative five. Since one is positive and the five is negative, one means you go to the right one unit and five uh, units down. So that's in quadrant four right here. And then the last one, negative one, positive four, that means you go one unit left and four units up, that's in quadrant two. Okay, so let's continue. Another similar type of question, um, except this time you're not actually in your quadrants. We want to state which axes each point lies in. In other words, um, that means you're gonna land on either the X or the Y axis. So negative one, zero. That means you go left one unit and zero units up and down. So if you're only moving left, that means you are on the x-axis. Zero, eight. That means you're moving zero units left and right, but eight, eight units up. That means you are in, I'm sorry, on the y-axis. Now zero, negative seven. That means you go zero units left or right, but seven units down, y-axis. Four, zero. That means you go four units to the right, but zero units up or down. So that's on the x-axis. And then our last one is zero, zero. Remember that point 
has a special name. It's called the uh, origin. And that point is where the two axes meet. And so therefore it is on both the X and the Y axis. All right, so we could find the distance between two points that I'll call X sub one, Y sub one for point one and X sub two, Y sub two for point two. So these little numbers in the corner, those are called a subscript. And so it's just indicating that there's uh, point one with subscripts of one and point two with subscripts of two. And so we're gonna use something called the distance formula to define the distance between them. So the distance formula is this one here in the green box. It says that D is equal to the square root of X sub one minus X sub two, that difference is squared, plus Y sub one minus Y sub two, and that difference is squared. So this x sub one and x sub two and this y sub one and y sub two, well that comes from the points um, that you're trying to find the distance of and so you're just substituting into the formula and simplifying the radical. All right, so you can also find the midpoint or in other words, the middle uh, point between two points. And for that we use something called the midpoint formula and the midpoint formula, well, you have to use two very similar formulas to, to get the midpoint. Uh, the x coordinate, which I called x sub m for midpoint, um, is the sum of x sub one and x sub two divided by two. So you can think of it as like an average. You add two numbers and divide by two. And then the y coordinate, which I called y sub m, is the y sub one plus y sub two divided by two. Again, it's like the average of the two y values. So the actual midpoint would be the coordinates x sub m comma y sub m. All right, so you're gonna wanna memorize the two formulas in these green boxes, distance formula and midpoint formula. So let's use these formulas to find the distance and the midpoint uh, for the points negative three, positive five, and positive two, zero. Then we'll plot the given points and the midpoint so you can see it on a graph. So my distance formula says that you subtract your x values. So that's why we see negative three minus two. And that difference must be squared plus the difference of your y values in your original points. And that difference must be squared. And we're taking the square root of that sum. So in the next line, you simplify what's inside of the parentheses. So I have D is equal to the square root of negative five squared plus five squared. So in the next line, we want to square the negative five and the five. So you get that D is equal to the square root of 25 plus 25. But 25 and 25 means that your distance is the square root of 50. Now remember 50 can be simplified because 50 is the same as 25 times two. And since the square root of 25 is five, that comes out of the radical and two stays in the radical. So your distance is five root two. This is what we would call an exact answer. So if you're asked to find the exact distance between two points, you would leave it as is. If you were asked to round, then you would need a calculator. So for now, we're gonna leave it as an exact answer. We'll do another example later where we're rounding. All right, so we were also asked to find the midpoint. So the work for the midpoint is here. I find the, uh, the uh, x coordinate by taking the x values of the original points, negative three plus two, add those and divide by uh, two. And so you get that your x coordinate is negative a half. Then you take the sum of your y coordinates, so that's five plus zero, and divide that by two, um, and you get two and a half, or five halves or two and a half as your y coordinate. So my midpoint is the value that you see here, or the coordinates that you see here, negative one half comma two and a half. All right, so we're gonna plot all of these points. The ones you see in this, um, purple -y kind of color are the original points. Remember the original points were in the problem here, negative three comma five and two comma zero. So negative three comma five is this one here 
and positive 2, 0 is this one on the x-axis. Okay, but I also asked you to graph, um, for us to graph the midpoint. So the midpoint is the one that's shown here in green. That's the negative, um, whoops, it's in the wrong spot. I went positive instead of negative. So I'll redo that. So the midpoint is negative one half, two and a half. So that means you go to the left and up two and a half units. So your midpoint is about here, which looks pretty accurate. That looks like the middle of the two purple points. So the distance between the two purple points is five root two, but the midpoint is the one that I have indicated now here in, um, in like a hot pink, and that's the coordinates negative a half, two and a half. All right, so let's do this again. We're gonna calculate the distance between negative two, negative four, and three, negative three, and we wanna round that distance to the hundreds place, and then we're gonna find the midpoint. All right, so first thing we wanna do is plug in the numbers into our distance formula. So um, here, when I plug into the distance formula, I have d is equal to the square root of negative two minus three. So those are the two x values that you are subtracting. Plus, um, and that difference gets squared, plus the difference in your y values. Now remember the y values um, are negative four and negative three. So that's what you see here in the original problem. So it's negative four minus negative three, and that also has to get squared. So on the next line, you have to do that subtraction and square the, the result. So negative two minus three is negative five. When you square that, you get 25. So that's your first number inside the radical. And negative four minus negative three, well, that becomes negative four plus three, which is negative one. And when you square that, well, that's plus one. So the distance, the exact value of the distance is the is square root of 26. When you plug that into a formula and round it to the hundreds place, you get that the distance is 5.10. So that's our first answer. So now let's find our midpoint. Remember, our midpoint uh, to find the x-coordinate, you, you take the sum of the x values in the original um, problem, the original points. So that's negative 2 plus 3 divided by 2. So my um, x sub m is a half. And y sub m, well, that'll be negative 4 plus negative 3 over 2. So that's negative 7 over 2. Um, and that's equal to negative 3 and a half. So your midpoint is 1 half negative three and a half. Okay, so moving on, um, you can also graph on a rectangular coordinate system by finding points that satisfy an equation. So um, we want to graph the equation y equals 2x minus 3 for x values of negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So I'm creating a chart here on the left to keep us organized, um, all the x values that are listed in the problem are on the uh, are written along the first column here, and the y column. Well, we get those values by plugging in the x values into the equation. So if you plug in negative two into the equation, um, you'll get two times negative two. That's negative four, and when you subtract three, you get negative seven. And similarly, you'll get the other results. Uh, when x is negative 1, y is negative 5. When x is 0, y is negative 3. When x is 1, y is negative 1. And when x is 2, y is 1. So those coordinates are plotted here on this graph. Um, so negative 2, negative 7 is uh, this one all the way here at the bottom uh, left negative 1, negative 5 is the next one, 0, negative 3 is right here on the y-axis, um, 1, negative 1 is this one, and 2, positive 1, you move 2 units right, 1 unit up, and so you get your point, and when you connect all those points, you get a line.
Okay, so that's one example. Um, let's do another. Uh, this one has, uh, it's an equation with a fraction in it. So we want to graph y equals negative 3 halves x plus 1 for the x values of negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. So when you have a fraction like that, um, it's a lot easier to graph integers than fractions. So I intentionally picked my x values so that when I plug them in for x into the equation, it will cancel with the 2 um, in the denominator of, of negative 3 halves. Okay, so um, let's, let's look at the chart here on the left. When x is negative 2, I'll do an example of how you find your y values. When x is negative 2, you take the negative 3 halves, you plug in negative 2 for x, and then we'll add the 1. So the 2's will cancel, and two negatives make a positive, so this becomes 3 plus 1, which is 4. That's exactly what you see here in the chart. You do the same thing for 0, 2, and 4, and you get the results uh, that you see um, in the right-hand column of the chart, uh, and then we plot them. So negative 2, positive 4, that means you go 2 units left and 4 units up, that's this point right here. 0, 1, that means that you only go up one unit. That's this point here. Uh, 2, negative 2, that's 2 units right, 2 units down. That's this uh, point here. And 4, negative 5 is the last one. And when you connect all of the points together, you again get a line. Okay, but the graphs are not always going to be lines. So here's an example of one, um, and this is the graph of a quadratic equation. And again, we know it's quadratic because I have that x squared term here. Okay, so this time we're going to um, find points uh, for this quadratic equation when x is equal to negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And again, the chart on the left just helps keep us organized. So again, I'll do one example here. When x is negative 2, y is equal to 1 minus negative 2 squared. So you have to square negative 2 first, so that's 1 minus 4, and 1 minus 4 is negative 3. So that's why that's the first value in the y column. So you do the same thing for negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, and you get the values um, that you see in column 2 of the chart. And now we plot these on the graph. Negative 2, negative 3 is this one here um, in quadrant 3. Negative 1, 0 is this one on the x-axis. 0, 1 is this point right here on the y-axis. 1, 0 is also on the x-axis. And then I have 2, negative 3 found in quadrant 4. When you connect those points. Um, this is not a V. It should look more like a U. Um, uh, so it's not a line. So this is actually the graph of what we would call a parabola. And we'll actually be practicing um, a lot more uh, later in this course how to graph a parabola. And there will be um, some interesting characteristics that you'll learn about it. So now you can try the homework for uh, section 8.1. Good luck.